this is a reaction video. Most reaction videos are to like dumb mainstream Hollywood movies or TV shows or something. This is a reaction video to a political document. Yeah. A PDF signed by about 30 people, 35 people, something like that. Former members of the activist network Direct Action Everywhere. Uh, I have a whole playlist of videos on this channel talking about the politics of Direct Action Everywhere. To what extent it's a good thing or a bad thing for veganism, etc. So my girlfriend here just said to me, I will probably have more to say about this than she does in this video. <laughs> I feel like I already said everything I had to say about Direct Action Network. It's a playlist. You can click below. You can check it out. I mean, some of my videos about them are intelligent. Some of them are less intelligent. I'm not going to say like every video I made about them was great, but I've had some intelligent things to say. I feel like I saw this coming. I called this years ago. And that this is a pub. So, okay, the document is a mutiny document yep. about trying to change the, trying to kick out the leaders of Direct Action Network. And for that purpose, stating what kinds of things they've been doing wrong, what the problems of leadership have been. Yeah, and what the solutions are. At the very end right. of the document, it's kind of, kind of states we have to make these changes or else. Yeah. Or else they will make a new organization or something. <laughs> Hell to pay. Yeah. Well, the problem is if you make a new organization, if you walk out and start a new organization, the problem is money. Mm -hmm. And the one word you will not find in this document is money. I mean, I think this document was yeah. honest about many things, but money was not one of them. Right. Right. So, I mean, all these disgruntled people who hate the leadership of Direct Action Network, why don't they just walk down the street, start a new organization, fundraising? There were, there were fundraising. two things that indirectly right. mentioned money. So, yeah. one was oh, right. You're right. Go on. allocating money for court fees. Right. And the then the other one right? was that move to Berkeley campaign. Right. So having there are people, people who moved right. to Berkeley and then found that they, they had difficulty paying for housing. And well, they, they moved to Berkeley in order to be a part of this movement mm -hmm. or to be part of its steering committee or part of it at an executive level. And once you move there, you find out surviving in Berkeley, California is yeah. not so easy. So I, I obviously, I don't think there was just forethought put into that. Like, mm -hmm. what was the responsibility of the organization? You know, are you just inviting someone in the sense that you invite a friend? Oh, hey, I'm moving to Berkeley, so you should yeah, move. Or, or are you actually kind of destroying people's lives? And, yeah, the document made it out to seem that they were coerced or, you know, they were they were promised uh, compensation. For well, it, it was clear from the document as a whole that if you didn't move to the San Francisco Bay Area, your opinion couldn't count. You yes. couldn't have control. So I, I don't know if I'd say coerced, but anyway. Now, I mean, okay, so one thing, it's not that honest about money. It's also not honest. M many people involved with DXC have talked to me about the cult-like aspects of the group, so the emotional mm -hmm. aspects. And I don't even fault them for that. I've talked about that in this channel for years too, right? I talked about like... You know, you have people willing to make financial sacrifices, willing mm -hmm. to make financial sacrifices for a certain kind of lifestyle to be in a certain kind of community, and then you start getting cult-like aspects that creep in, and I can sympathize, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And remember, yeah. these are these are real people, so we got, we're doing this live stream, and people are agreeing, yeah, Berkeley is really expensive. But anyway, look, I remember I watched a documentary about a Hindu cult group, so they were white people who converted to Hinduism in the United States. And when the cult finally fell to pieces and was shut down and when it all fell apart, one of the things they said in interviews was, look, we made all these sacrifices just to live in a community of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to be other around other people. That's a powerful thing for most human beings. And, of course, when kids are involved and work is involved and money's involved, mm -hmm. you know, you want to raise your kids around other people with the same values. And whether that's because you're a white person who converted to Hinduism or veganism or whatever it is so i actually say that well simply i don't use it as like a shallow insult to say there are cult-like elements mm -hmm. you give people something to believe in they start believing in it they start committing their time and effort and money and you start getting some cult-like yeah and one tough. of the main problems mentioned in that in that section was that the chapters that the former members were a part of or that right. the members were a part of to, and they moved to berkeley the those uh former right. chapters kind of disintegrated after they left or because shut it was down or yeah. Like, yeah um but yeah um there were, the other thing that is kind of cult like is the love bombing yes so like, that's a cult term sure yeah, right you mentioned right, that right, was right, a cult right. term right. um i had not heard of it but basically um when there's a conflict uh or somebody has a complaint we right. would talk to them and say, "Hey, t let's talk as a friend," and or, or right, they right, would right. Uh, he would compliment them and you know say what a great contributor they are yeah. to the movement. Mm -hmm. But in reality, he's trying to get a confession out of them that he can use to kick them out of the group or, right. or condemn them or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, 
I do not think Wayne Seong is very bright. I don't, and my opinion of his intelligence is partly based on his recordings, podcasts, videos, but it's mostly based on reading his essays, reading his writing. Mm -hmm. And most of the behavior they attribute to Wayne here, I don't really think of as kind of like manipulative or scheming. I, I just think it's stupid. It's mm -hmm. my it's my opinion. And the stupidity of this group, which I took this seriously as a warning years ago, I said, look, they are lying to you, and they are lying to themselves in claiming nobody's in charge. Right. They claim they had horizontal leadership and that nobody's in charge. And the first crack in that facade was when they had this sexual exploitation, uh, what's the word, scandal. Mm. Sexual assault scandal, okay? Now, what actually happened with this scandal, we're never going to know, right? Like, you know, <laughs> there's no point in us talking about it. There are insiders who know the whole thing, but there, was, there were a number of scandals. And the hilarious thing to me was, at that time, they were so maintaining this facade that nobody was in charge. They would even respond to, because I was talking to them, I was trying to do interviews with leaders. Mm. And they would write back, and I said, look, I'm interested in talking to leaders of the group on my YouTube channel, positively, you know. And they would write back and say, there are no leaders, and this is not a group. Mm. They would say, direct action everywhere is a fully horizontal network, and that's all it is. So like a Facebook group. Nobody's in charge, nobody's a leader, nobody's a follower. This, this kind of claim yeah. that it's just people communicating uh, who all happen to be vegan activists. And as soon as the sex scandal happened, it was, you have to be blind. They, said, they immediately said, no, 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 don't worry. We have this hierarchy. Mm -hmm. We have some people who are leaders and some people who are followers. Some people are in charge. And these people will have to answer for their misconduct to those people. And so this whole bureaucratic top-down structure was revealed. Mm -hmm that apparently before they'd been in denial about, you know? Yeah. So to me, at that stage, everything that's wrong with this organization is obvious. And also, it really is a one-man dictatorship for life organization. Wayne Seong is the dictator, and his girlfriend, Priya, is the number. She's referred to as the mother of the organization on their websites, and so on, the mama bear of the organization. Nobody elected them, and they just had... So just a couple of days ago, less than two weeks ago, they had elections that this document explains were rigged or subverted, were not yeah. legitimate. Mm -hmm. Not even went against the rules. Once right. again, went against the laws of DXE. Right, they broke. They, they broke their own rules. So yeah. keep in mind, we're not. We're not. We're not applying United Nations standards here or something. Right. DXE broke mm -hmm. their own rules and their own procedures in terms of this election. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to announce it two weeks in in advance. This one was only one week in advance. The, Didn't the, have all the members. It was a private meeting. You guys can read the PDF if you want to know every detail, yeah. but yeah, this, yeah, and also Wayne had kind of shut down every possible source of debate, including shutting down email groups. Mm -hmm. He had prevented other people from running against him in the election. Yeah. They had refused to allow people to have the status of so-called global members, which is basically like their parliament level, their, high, their executive level members. So there was a lot of bullying, intimidation, and as they say here, overly centralized control. Mm -hmm. But this is coming from an organization that used to deny that central school. And look, the, the thing with denial, yeah. uh, that's parallel with just the, the issue of finances, mm -hmm. with them just denying. And there have been these debates on the internet in podcast format or what have you, where they just deny that money is an issue. And, you know, I, even in his debate with Gary Francione, mm -hmm. he just said, no, no, there is no money. Nobody donates anything. And Francione said back to him, what are you talking about? I've been to your website. There's a big red button that says donate now. And they received donations from PETA, People, people with ethical treatment of animals, and then they denied that they've received the donations, then nobody knows where the money goes, nobody's honest about who's getting paid. They do not have a Form 990. Only if you're an American citizen do you know the term Form 990, but in general, charities post public information in terms of Form 990. Uh, you actually don't have to if you're below a certain number of hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. But still, it's expected that charities have that type of public accountability. Mm. And they do not. And I've written to them asking for it. And I, had, I wrote to an insider who I knew through Facebook and asked her, look, take this to Wayne, take this to leadership. Why is there nothing like a form? Why is there something resembling it? Like maybe not every detail, but where is the money coming from? Where is it going? Who's making a salary out of this and who isn't? Because I don't even resent that Wayne makes a salary out of this. I think most people donating money to this group accept the idea that the leaders make a salary. But you should have the same transparency that, that PETA has. Mm -hmm. PETA has that level of transparency. So, yeah. yeah. And this document, as I mentioned, is more honest about many things, but not about So, oh, sorry, sorry. As I said before, I feel like I don't have a lot to say because... I said it, and I saw it all coming. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, for both of us, I've talked about in this channel for years, 
activism means different things to different people. Mm. And for me right now, one form of activism I can do is uh, publishing a children's book to promote veganism. A children's book is very clearly and explicitly about veganism. Mm. We're getting an illustrator. We're getting a publisher. And we're doing the whole the whole nine yards. Um, uh, for a lot of people in their minds, street protests are kind of the sign of purity in activism. We saw even looking at stuff like Joey Carbstrong. There's a lot of unexamined adulation for the street protest. But what this shows is there's nothing pure about that. They, they lied also. I already had videos of this. They lied about arrests. We have videos and websites where they claim nobody's ever been arrested, which is a lie. People are getting arrested. And they have to pay court fees. In the United States... Hiring a lawyer to plead your case is not cheap, yeah. whether it's criminal charges or otherwise. There are people facing the legal consequences of of DXE protests, of direct action over protests. Mm -hmm. And in at least one case that we know about, shall we say through from the horse's mouth, from people talking to us, mm -hmm. uh, somebody was promised by direct action everywhere that the organization would pay for their legal fees, and then the organization did not do so. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to speculate as to why, other people have told us speculation as well, but regardless of the reason, even if there were good reasons, which I doubt, that, that that's destroying people's lives. I mean, long story short, this story, so you participated in this protest for veganism, now you're bankrupted trying to pay for your own legal defense. Yeah. Um, yeah writing clear. a children's book has advantages. <laughs> Yeah, what was the, what is the term? Emergent leadership? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why don't you start that for that? Right? Well, it's pretty clear from this document. You know, what they allege makes it clear that it's not a legit form of leading an organization. Yeah. Emergent leadership. Um, what What is emergent leadership? It means nobody has a clear explanation for why Wayne is in charge or why Wayne can unilaterally, you know, shut things down and cancel things and whatever. Yeah. So I, yeah. if you say democracy, everyone knows what democracy means. If you mm -hmm. say transparency and accountability, we know what those things mean. But emergent leadership seems to be a kind of 21st century fashionable term for nobody knows why some people are more important than others. It just emerged that way. Yeah. Right? So I find that very menacing. Yeah. And how he basically ousted people who could have been in leadership roles right. that threatened his, you know, credibility, I guess. That's right, his prestige. Yeah. His prestige, yeah. yeah. Um. But, you know, b bottom line... Um, you know, I've said before, people think about stupidity like an obstacle, like a rock on the road, like something you got to move around or deal with. Mm -hmm. And stupidity is not something inert and heavy and immobile. I think stupidity is something fast moving and destructive and dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's less like a rock on the road. It's more like a fire in an office waste paper basket. You know, if you don't manage it and control it, suddenly it gets out of control. People like Wayne, from my perspective, are dangerous not because they're evil and not because they have bad intentions. I, I really don't. I think Wayne has good intentions. I really do. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he was scheming any of this stuff. Like, reading through this document, each one of these ridiculous conflicts, I'm sure he was. He thought he was doing the best for the, for the organization and for veganism and everything else. He's stupid. He's stupid. And stupidity is dangerous. And when you have stupidity in a position of power and authority, unquestioned authority, authority people can't question or can't, it's really dangerous, and things go down downhill quick. Mm -hmm. the The great thing is, I said this in criticizing DXC under another heading before. You know, I said, "Well, why would you protest the Bernie Sanders lecture?" Yeah, you know what I mean. Why not rent your own lecture hall, mm -hmm. have your own lecture? You know what I mean. Yeah, this this yeah. kind of thing. This is a feature of democracy. They mentioned uh, disrupting. Yes, Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. Yeah, really. I've had film clips of that on my channel. Mm. Both the oh, Bernie yeah. Sanders and Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Another thing, just this and people were going to jail really for it. Stuff, right? Was the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? Right. <laughs> so sure. That was pretty funny. Yeah. But they were saying that that didn't get an, as much attention as uh, what was happening in the Berkeley yes. truckers, um, just because of the focus in their social media group on Berkeley. Who's Who's going to make that decision, right? I mean, you yeah. can. Mm -hmm. Who decides what's on the YouTube channel? Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately what that's about, right? Mm -hmm. So people want to feel famous. Yeah. I, I'm not even hating, but that's obviously in the 21st century, if you have a political group of that size, those are going to be the dispute. Who's on the Instagram page? Who's on the YouTube channel? Yeah. How, how are you going to decide that? Through emergent leadership? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's the big thing. I mean, I'm sure for a lot of people, that's a real dispute. They say, hey, I've worked really hard to make this day of action, this protest, this event, or maybe in some cases I went to prison because yeah. of this event and I didn't even get on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, it's sour grapes, but I, 
that would really create bitterness. Yeah. And meanwhile, some other event that happened to be in Berkeley, California, is on mm-hmm. the YouTube channel on Instagram, and it's they didn't do as much work. Yeah. People will resent the hell out of that. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's a real 21st century activism problem. It's not in uh, what was that book? Saul Alinsky's. Uh, Oh, Rules, for Rules for Radicals. Rules for Radicals does not cover how to run your YouTube page or your social media, you know, campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously some of the conflicts are about this, about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, if the leader of an organization is stupid, what we have here in this document is evidence of an attempted coup d'etat, an attempted mutiny against the leadership. Mm-hmm. But most of the time people just vote with their feet. You yeah. just say, okay, well, I'll join PETA instead. I'll start my own organization instead, right. whatever it is. But there's be. some really talented people that were not, you know, they were, right. they basically left the group. So, in some ways, they were kicked out. In some ways, they, yeah, were, mm-hmm. they, were, they didn't have a choice. Yeah. Wayne kicked them out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a shame that they could have these talented people. But because, I don't know, Wayne's ego was threatened or just, yeah, like you said, his prestige. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, I mean, you know, uh, so, I mean, what, this is like the tragedy of veganism is t- 2017. You have 1,000 isolated, angry individuals at keyboards making angry comments on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And the question is, how can you organize them into groups of 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 or 1,000 and actually mm-hmm. make something positive out of it? And the answer is not this. Yeah. <laughs> Direct action everywhere is, is an example, I think an instructive example, of how not to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you should do it w- would be a topic for, for another video. Yeah. But look, uh, I said this in other videos. I was giving someone specific uh, specific advice on a specific group. Okay, and I can say my own experience when I was in Victoria. So in Victoria, there was a small vegan activist group, and I really mm-hmm. did disagree with the leadership on things. Mm-hmm. But the leadership, I recognized they had done all the hard work to build up this group. So I wasn't going to try to take it away from them or challenge them. For me, I was like, okay, look, i got to vote with my feet. Because mm-hmm. I could just say, look, basically the guy who's the dictator for this group, he he's the one putting in all the long hours. So I'm you know I'm not going to try to take his uh, take his position away from him or even challenge his voice in this group. Mm-hmm. He wants to act out his little power trip fantasy. Let him do it. I got you know we'll just walk away. Um, but sure, for some people, DXE is the only game in town. So that if yeah. they walk away, they're all alone. Right, there isn't right. some other activist group for them mm. to, or if they're kicked out and shunned and bad. But they was talking about gaslighting and stuff here too. Yeah, right? yeah. Talk about you know bad, basically right, bad mouthing people. I don't want to condemn the whole group because it's, it looks like they have chapters all over. You know, yeah, the, yeah. at the bottom of the PDF, there were a lot of signatures yes. in a lot of different cities. So I don't, I you know, I don't. Well, this is this basically about bad mouthing the leadership. It's basically yes, bad mouthing right. the three people in charge at the yeah. top. Just saying. That's the yeah, right. right. But otherwise, it obviously, is, a I lot guess, of people with good intent. Well, we talked to that one guy. Via Skype or whatever, yeah, we had, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. uh, he quit two years ago though because he saw how the group was getting worse and worse. Mm-hmm. But sure, I'm, I'm, but put it this way, I'm sure for a lot of activists, DXE will be a formative influence in their lives, even if they were involved for only a few weeks or a few months and then mm-hmm. quit, where they look at that and probably drew positive lessons from it and negative. Lessons. I'm sure for a lot of people, PETA was like that. Probably mm-hmm. some people were involved with PETA for only a few months and then said, "Wow, they don't want to be involved," you know, but. For some people coming up, I've just got to say I, I could never be a member of a group like that where I regard the leadership as stupid and dangerous. Yeah. That's how I regard Wayne Siong and everything I read from him, including his essays and his debates with Gary Francione and stuff. I I can't do it. You yeah. know what I mean? And as I say, I, it's to me like I don't mean it just as like a low catty personal insult. It's like no, this is a real problem. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have to have leaders who are reliable and accountable and intelligent and admirable. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, leadership in something like veganism. It, it's it's demanding in some ways and not in other. Uh, look, and I've said in other videos too, like we got to stop feeling sorry for ourselves. Unlike the leaders of the Laotian Revolution, none of these people are living in caves. Wayne Siong is, uh, is living in Berkeley, California, I think in luxury. I don't think any of these people are living in poverty or living in the jungle or living in a cave or what have you. None of them, you know, none of them are suffering. They always like to compare themselves. This was the founding mandate of TXE. They compare themselves to the abolition of slavery, leaders of those kinds of movements. Well, you didn't fight in a civil war. You know, <laughs> you, aren't, you aren't fighting in a slave rebellion like the rebellions in the history of Haiti or something no you know keep it in perspective all this is kind of you know kid stuff compared to real political movements in the history of the world yeah. but sure nevertheless for the role of the leader it can't be wayne siong it can't be gary urovsky it can't be durian rider mm-hmm. these these really are the examples we've been dealing with so 
whatever the future is, whatever the way is to get vegans to move past isolated individuals to groups of 10, 20, 50, 100, it ain't this. And hey, look, let's, let's throw in the positive contrast. Meanwhile, quietly, PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, they're taking over. The, they're winning. They're taking over the world. Maybe they're taking over the future of the movement. Um, guys like John McDougal, quietly, they're not in the street. Yeah. Pro, you know what I mean? It's just a different paradigm. And they're making, they're making a big difference, making a big impact. So I do hope people learn from both the positive and negative of direct action everywhere. Mm -hmm. But let's also learn from PCRM. Let's learn from John McDougal. Let's learn from the whole range of what's going on in just the, the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And for me, you guys can check out the playlist if you want to hear more. But yeah, long story short, I do see direct action everywhere as much more of a negative example than a positive one. Mm -hmm. That's a wrap. Mm -hmm.